So water, we need water. It's a not negotiable subject. You just got to find out how to get it in. We will gain insights from Barbara O'Neill, a naturopath and health educator dedicated to helping you achieve vibrant health through natural means telling us about how essential to life water is. Today, we'll explore the effects of not drinking enough water, the best types of water to consume, how much water you lose during the day, and how to properly replenish it along with the best times to drink water for optimal health. Water is the most vital nutrient for our bodies, yet many of us don't drink enough of it. Not drinking enough water can lead to dehydration, which impacts everything from your skin and digestion to your energy levels and brain function. Chronic dehydration can contribute to more serious health issues, including kidney stones and urinary tract infections. Water is essential for life, and understanding how much you need and when to drink it can make a world of difference to your health. By choosing the best quality water and drinking it at the right times, you can ensure your body stays hydrated and functions at its best. Let's listen to Barbara tell a story where water plays a critical role. A friend of Michael's is a bricklayer. And he rang up Michael the other day, he's a bit of a rough bloke, he said, oh, he said, I've got this lower back pain. He said, I've been to the chiropractor, he can't fix me. He said, all the blokes on the job site are getting it. Michael said, what do you drink? He said, oh, we all drink Coke. How much Coke do you drink a day? Oh, a couple of litres. Michael said, well, I've got a simple little test that you can try. Get rid of the Coke and drink water. He said, water? I said, is it just water? Michael said, do you remember that one? <laughs> remember what you used to drink? He said, right, oh, we've got nothing else to lose. Do you know within a couple of days, all the men had no lower back pains. <laughs> all the men were coming alive. <laughs> the work on the workforce improved. The output improved. They were all so happy. What, what was the change? It was just water. Barbara will now tell us about a couple of substances which are commonly consumed, which are dehydrating agents. One of the problems with things like Coke and coffee, they contain two major dehydrating agents, which is the caffeine and the sugar. And so even if the person drinks one or two glasses a day, they're still not getting hydrated because the coffee and the Coke are taking it all away. It must be water and water alone. Are there different types of water and what is best? What's the best water? Well, the best water is pure water. And most taps today contain water that has fluoride and chlorine in it. The chlorine is not a huge problem because if you pour a jug and put it on the bench, within half an hour the chlorine has all evaporated, but the pro there is a problem with the fluoride. So we must get water filters. Uh, I think reverse osmosis is the main filter. There could be more. Please do a search on it. I can't assure you because I don't know enough about water filters because we've never used one because we've always had the rainwater or the creek water. We have beautiful water here. So, very important to drink good water. Is alkaline water helpful? One man said to me, what about an alkaline water machine? Well, as you saw yesterday in our acid alkaline lecture, alkaline is very important. But alkaline water is not going to do a huge amount if the person is eating a lifestyle that is all acid eating a food program that's all acid or partaking of a lifestyle that is all acid. It is true, an alkal alkaline water can be a contributing factor in, in the whole picture. Barbara will now tell us a personal story about not drinking enough water. I never used to drink water. I was breastfeeding or pregnant nonstop for 14 years. My last baby, I, fed, I breastfed for three years and I hardly ever drank water. I drank maybe one or two glasses a day. I commonly had headaches, commonly had migraines. Whenever we traveled, I hated traveling in the car because I always had a terrible headache at the end of the day. I also used to get terrible sinus problems. Do you know I don't get any of that now? 
When I discovered the importance of water drinking, little by little I started to implement it. I used to say to my friends, I've just discovered a new medicine. The kids aren't getting colds anymore, a whole lot of things happening. And they said, what is it? I said, water, <laughs> just water. How many people get up in the morning and they don't have water? And in the morning is the most dehydrating time of the whole day. Is there a best way to drink water? The best way to take water in is little by little by little by little. Your body can utilize it better. It's like a plant. If this plant was dry and I put 500 ml of water in there, we know where it would go. It would all run out the bottom. But if I put a half a cup in and then I come back and put another half a cup in, then I come back and put another half a cup in, I can maybe get nearly a litre in there without any running out. And it's the same with the body. Little by little is the best. The only time I will drink a whole glass of water at once would be when I wake up in the morning. Now, Barbara will tell us about how we lose water at night. Have you ever slept on a mattress on the floor and in the morning you lift up the mattress and it's all damp underneath? That's the water that you have lost in the night. That's why you have to be very careful of your bedroom because of the water that's coming out of your, your, your body in the night. That's why we always fold the bed clothes back and allow the bed to have a good air, have the windows open. It's even better if you can have a bedroom that has sun coming into the bed to purify it and air it. Important to try and get the mattress in the sun at least once a year. <laughs> Change your mattress protectors. Also be cautious of under the bed. Always should have slats or wire which allows the moisture that you lose in the night to come away. Many people are tired when they wake up because of the air in their bedroom. You must very, very careful on the air in the bedroom and as we looked at earlier, the electromagnetic field in that bedroom as well. Is there a particular time that's best to drink water? So water is lost every day, water must be replaced. And here is a good rule of thumb, 25 kilo of body weight, not two kilo. 25 kilo of body weight to one liter of water. That's a good rule to assess how much water the children drink. And it's also a good incentive for weight loss, isn't it? I always said to my children when they wake up, I used to, and I say to my grandchildren now, have you watered your garden yet? What's the garden? Of course, it's that lovely flora, flora inside your gut. In that uh, catalyst program called Gut Reaction, one, one professor said, there's a literal jungle in there. <laughs> So I say to my grandchildren, have you watered your garden yet? And they come up in the morning and say, Grandma, we've watered our garden. I said, I'm so pleased. I'm so pleased because now you can have breakfast. So it's always a rule in the home. If the child doesn't want to drink water, my answer is, I'm so sorry because you can't have breakfast now. <laughs> it's very simple. So you, lots of little ways to encourage the children to drink water. You will notice if the children don't drink water as soon as they've eaten, then they want to drink their water. Barbara, tell us about the acid stomach. And what the water does is it neutralizes the stomach acid. We need that stomach acid to be about a pH of 2.5. That's very acid. And your stomach needs to be that acid you will not feel it because you drank a glass of water half an hour before the meal and you've got a nice thick mucosa wall there. So you will not feel it. But that pH is necessary for the enzymes in the stomach to be activated to be able to break your protein down. That's why you stop drinking about half an hour before the meal and you start drinking about an hour and a half to two hours after the meal. If someone's thirsty when they eat, by all means have a mouthful, but at the same time it needs to be assessed how much water has been drunk. So you can prevent needing to drink with your meals by, by drinking between your meals. Barbara will now give us her final comments about the importance of water. 
As I said with exercise, not negotiable subject and so is water. It's a not negotiable subject. And if you get sick, if you have diarrhea or constipation or if you have a headache or cold, up your water intake. Dr. Christopher in America, he said, here's a sign to tell if you're drinking too much water. Put your head on the side and if the water comes out your ears, in other words, it's almost impossible to drink too much water. The only time you could drink too much water is if you're not having those minerals. So as soon as you start drinking more water, you will start to, re to lose a few more minerals. So it's very important to have the proper salt. My suggestion is about a teaspoon of salt in a day, over the day. If a person's not used to having salt, I say start small. Start small, just little by little increase it and your body will adapt to that. Just as it adapts to no salt, it will start to adapt to proper salt. Third most vital element needed for life. Remember, your health is the lock and we're here to provide the keys. Keep turning to Key Health for insights that unlock your full potential. The key to lifelong vitality is in your hands, it's just one bite away.